Hey friends, I don't know if there was some technical difficulties, but it seemed like people were. So this is Felice Clark. I'm gonna try this again. Please give me some hearts and say hi. So I know the, so the comments are working that I didn't. One time I pressed the wrong, <laughs> I pressed the wrong button and then people couldn't say hi. Yay, hi. So today we're gonna to be talking about why I kissed Pex goodbye. And you're probably freaking out. <laughs> she kissed Pex goodbye, she doesn't use that, what? <laughs> um, okay, good, okay. Okay, let me get this set up. Good, I'm, yeah, I kept seeing people popping in and out and I'm like, I know I'm live, but I didn't know if people, um, we're seeing me. So I'll kind of, I'm going to talk really quickly about um, what I'm going to be talking about, a little bit of background. So when I first, um, it was about three or four years into my career, I had um, a K1 and a 2-3 autis autism classrooms. And most of the kids in those classrooms were pretty high. They were verbal. They were, um, some of them were getting mainstreamed in the classroom. So I, I did therapy. Hello, Tina. Um, just like just like I would my language disorder kids. And, and I also worked on social skills and I and that's my forte. I love school, social skills, especially when they know how to talk. And then the next year, I had a few kids that were minimally verbal. They weren't really communicating. So I told my district, you need to send me to PECS, please. Now, fast, go, I need to go to a training. So I went to a training. It was an awesome training. Um, I really like PECS. Um, and then that's kind of, I started, every, you know, any kid that was nonverbal, I was just using pecs, 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 cutting out all those icons. Um, and I felt like something was missing in my therapy, but I didn't really know what. Um, I thought, I think pecs, so I'll go into that deep later. So then the next following year, more kids who are a little bit more severe, nonverbal, minimally verbal, are joining this program and I'm like something has to change I need to get I'm losing my AAC training I know these kids need more visual supports so I so my, my district we're talking about PECs and we're talking about low-tech AAC ideas and I'm giving you a little background about how I got to this place where I stopped using PECs regularly um, Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> um, okay, so um, then I went. I, I went to a um, AAC training that was for assessment for a whole year long, and from that training, I do do do. Um, I started to use core boards, and sorry guys, I'm getting some interesting comments here. <laughs> so um the i was okay let's see here i'm getting off course because i can't concentrate and see these um comments <laughs> okay <laughs> so i was using pecs and what i found um was that i was able to target requesting a lot and i was able to target joint attention and initiation a lot but it was eating up my time I had more kids than I could physically get all that, um, keep up with everything. And then I went to this AAC assessment training and they're like, here, you need to try these core boards. I mean, that was the main thing that they said you need to try, you need to use in therapy. Um, they said they liked PECs, that it was a good foundational thing, but try core boards. And so I tried them and it, and I had 83 kids on my caseload. I was fluctuating from 75 to 83 kids on my caseload. I was struggling with being able to prep enough visuals and a vis enough supports for when I did therapy. And I was running out of, like I was running cr around crazy, um, so to speak. So I, I printed up some core boards, laminated them, and I'm gonna show you them. Brought them in, started using them in therapy. And yeah, and I brought them with anything, any therapy idea, item. And here's what I found. I found that 80% of my students with autism that were minimally verbal, or some of my kids who were even verbal, I was using them too. Because I was pushing into the classroom a lot. So I was using them with kids who go, I want juice, but then they couldn't say hi to me. They, they, they never asked me questions. They could tell me what they wanted, but um, it was say this, what do you want? I mean, I, 
these kids were being prompted to then verbally say something with three or four words in it. So I used it with those kids. I used it with kids who were still working on um, they're using signs or they were using their pecs a little bit and they had maybe you know a handful of words and then I used it with kids who were um, I would say nonverbal yeah I and, and so and that's gonna be my point to uh, chit chat I've been using it with my preschoolers and it has been amazing um, so I'm gonna probably talk about this some more because I could probably talk about this forever and I don't have a ton of like research of why I know it works but I see it work and so um, and so here's the reason why I stopped using pecs as my first go-to I still use pecs there were still a couple of kids that needed to still work on building joint attention and initiation and pecs is amazing for that and it's very structured um, yes Tina so yeah I I started I was so desperate at times I was like okay I'm gonna do these core boards and it alleviated um, feeling like I never, I always had visuals. So even if things were crazy, I could grab my core board and I knew I had at least enough visuals to communicate with my students and for them to communicate back with me. So that's, so that's why I started using core boards because it allevi alleviated that feeling like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do for these kids? If they don't have visuals, they're not gonna be able to, I'm not gonna be able to communicate effectively with them and I'm not gonna have fun in therapy because I know that one of them's gonna have a tantrum and I'm gonna have nothing to, to, to show for or you know, whatever. So, so that's really what I, um, I'm gonna show you an example too. So I moved from core boards and core boards are essentially core vocabulary that we use for communication. And so this, you can actually go on my website and this is free, this one's free. You can get this in my AAC starter kit, but this, the bubbles one, I love using bubbles with preschoolers or kids that are on the spectrum or that are nonverbal. Kids love bubbles. So this I laminated, I, I printed this got a big file folder I put velcro and then I have so then you do have to make fringe vocabulary because it, it does help but you don't need it and I'm going to show you how I used it so this is all the fringe that I could think of that I thought was important for blowing bubbles now um, when I do bubbles we blow them up, we blow them down, we stomp on them, we catch them. So I have a lot of voca fringe vocabulary that I like to target. But if I didn't have the fringe vocabulary, I could still talk about go, stop, I want go, um, I want more, no, don't blow them high, yes blow them here and so even though i don't have that word on there when i'm do using these core boards i'm saying the stuff that i want to say as i touch it so i don't just go yes sometimes i will if i have a kid that needs just a one word response but some of my kids that just need um, the visual support i'll go yes blow it high um and what i found from my class was I was doing it right because <laughs> I was doing these right before the class started and they kind of helped fine-tune how I wanted it to look um, but yes I mean yeah so I'm gonna show you all the ways that I communicate I did this with my preschooler and I'm gonna tell you um, what I how I targeted it but um, yeah so I model this I talk to the kids and I model this. So I'll say, bye bubbles. I want catch bubbles. So I want to catch the bubbles. I want to catch the bubbles. So I'm modeling for them while I'm, um, while I'm talking with them. How young of a kiddo would you use a board like this with? I'm using, I use this with my three and a half year old. Pre, I, have, I have four preschoolers. Um, two of them are pretty verbal. One of them was kind of like, she's minimally verbal after using this for a couple of sessions i even got the teacher on board because she saw me using it and how much the girl was talking and so what i like to do with these four boards is you know you got to just dive into them and see if it will work for your student and you can't just do it one session and go oh it didn't work 
So I had a couple of girls a few years ago where there were, you know, they really were kind of at that pex level or what I did was, and I didn't bring an example home, or I had a core board, but all I had was go, want, all done, more, help. So I would keep the core board like this, but I had everything blank except for the five core words I was trying to get them to use. And the problem, some of the roadblocks that I found with the kids who are minimally, like who are nonverbal or are in, you know, and they have, they have attention issues and sensory issues and all these issues is that if the classroom teacher is not going to use these visuals and not going to help prompt, imagine how long it's going to take for you to get that child to then do to, to, to get on board with using this. So I did find some roadblocks with a couple of girls where I, uh, students where I felt like they were, they were struggling with, with uh, carrying it over. And because I didn't have complete buy-in from the teacher, you know, they weren't using that all day. So I was always curious, like if the teacher was prompting them to use this core board and did it all day long for a whole week, I wonder if they would have gotten the skill, you know, they would have picked it up quicker. Um, and so I did find some roadblocks with that. So I would say good candidates for this is anyone that has some, some semblance of joint attention. So they have to have, they have to realize that you are, oh, you know, you're in the room, they, you give them access to things. Um, the kids who I saw the most um, growth were the ones that were late talkers. I have a little, uh, a student who I don't know, there's a lot of factors going on. Um, with her profile, so it's hard to say if she, if the, wh what's causing what, because um, she's bilingual, there's all these different things. But I, I whip these out, I use these with her, and she's, she's talking so much. And then I had another, I forgot to bring home my other, I'll bring it next week, um, another flip book of low tech stuff, and it had feelings, it had a feelings tab. And she started crying about something, and I let her have her little tantrum, and I and then I said, "Come here. I want to. I want you to tell me how you're feeling. Are you feeling sad or happy?" And this is a, so. This is a girl that was. She's kind of. She can communicate. Um, this. This. I could tell from using the core boards with her for a few weeks that she's a good fit for them. She was able to tell me she was sad, and she verbalized it. She wouldn't have been able to do that without the visuals, I don't think. And the tantrum would have been longer. And then, um, she. And then we could move on because I said, I know you're feeling frustrated. Or I think I said, you're feeling sad, but you'll get a turn next time for the bubbles. It's almost your turn. And, you know, and I was able to comfort her. And um, what I did notice with all my kids that I use this with, and I, and I pushed in a lot and it was kind of like, you guys are all getting this. I'm bringing this in because I have to use it for a few kids and everyone's going to get it, was my kids started using more functions of language than just requesting. And that was my biggest pet peeve with PEX. And it's not that PEX isn't good. I just think when we have to use PEX only once or twice a week because that's all we can service our kids, I don't I wasn't getting the most bang for my buck in therapy. And with this, I was getting a lot more bang. So um let me so we can do, you know, here's a fun comment. Uh oh, it spilled. You know, I want wand, I want blow. Those are um requests. I'm happy these bubbles are you know I'm happy when I catch the bubbles so you're talking about a feeling look do you still use pecs without joining um you know it's been a few years they sh uh, she said do you use pecs for kids without joint attention or communicative intent it's been a few years since I've been in that classroom and I was kind of like feeling I was at my rope a little bit with figuring out what to do. But um, so what I did with some of those kids was um, that had limited joint attention and not really communicating. I still I pushed in because I wanted to also model if there was a breakthrough that the teacher might see it um, or the aides would see it. And I would, you know, I, it, I think I had to um, I used real photos and I tried to expand their highly preferred items that they wanted. So I tried to find things that they really liked. So I use that in therapy a lot to try to get joint attention and requesting. I use real photos instead of icons. And then um, 
I use I did use pecs and I tried to work on joint attention and I would manually prompt them or help try to get the aide to sit with me and do it too and and then I also did I did f snacks and cooking with them too and to get the aides involved to get everybody involved because it, it, it does it takes a village you know like it's too overwhelming these some of these kids are too overwhelming um, I you know Regina um, I did and then I just would take it with me I s some of the teachers didn't want to use it but like just recently um, I I saw them. and then the teacher even told, I'm gonna make one for the mom the teachers like whoa she talks so much so I was pushing in yeah like you could try to get by but that that takes from my experience um, and just talking with a bunch of my friends getting people to think about low-tech tools as a as a good thing is just a journey and it takes a long time and it's nothing against um, teachers or staff it's just it took me even a long time I didn't even realize that that how much I was limiting my students by just allowing them to request stuff and not being able to say they're mad and not that I didn't want them to do that I just realized I didn't even have words for them to do that half the time and I was doing a lot of like ABA behavior style stuff which isn't bad either like I like those techniques but I was making them just like throw a big giant fit and I never I didn't let them have you know I forgot a little bit I'll be honest I forgot sometimes like that my kids have a voice that I get to sit here and you know yell at <laughs> yell in traffic and I get to express myself when I'm mad or when I'm happy and I I have all the vocabulary in the world and they don't and I mean I, w I wish I could say that I didn't not take that their voice away sometimes but I think I did in unintentionally because I always tried to make sure that they could communicate but I think I forgot I forgot about all the different ways that even when you're three because like my daughter's three she can tell me um, she greets me that's a function she socially tells me that she loves me um, she can tell me if she wants something or doesn't want something you know she can tell me if she wants to do something again she can tell me she can agree with me and you know she can share her opinion and she's only three and so a lot of my kids that I was working with they're this they they were at the same uh, level in some ways and so that you know I forgot um, do I oh, do I ha yeah I have some blog posts that I did and I have a um, AAC starter kit and I have um, I don't know what I could do I could um, I don't know if I'll maybe I'll do a blog post with a roundup of ideas because I know speechy musing ha musings has some cool low-tech stuff Jenna has some really cool low-tech stuff um, yeah, I'll maybe I'll just do a blog post and then with links to everything because yeah, there's a lot of there's a and then um, I forget her name. She has a, a lot of eight. There's just there's a ton of stuff. So yeah, I'll do a blog post. Um, so yeah, so this um, yes, and I will link on Facebook. Yeah, I'll do a blog post and then I'll share it um, where it's just kind of like here's a roundup of things that I know are out there. So I think that's that's it. But yeah, I just wanted to show those to you. So I still use pecs. I think it's I um the training was amazing. I just wanted to get you guys going, what is she talking about? <laughs> um and yeah, and I I did I've seen a lot of growth. And that was the thing I was gonna tell you. I, um some of my kids who I felt like that do you even see me, do you even know me, started um saying hi Mrs. Clark and coming up to me and giving me a hug. Um, or initiating with me more and so that I was sold sold um, and just recently I have a little preschool girl who she runs over to me and it feels so good because I know that I took that time to really see her as a person and see that she has communication needs and and it was it's it's just like oh you know I just know she knows that that I've given her an opportunity to communicate and um, and I'm so grateful that I started using core boards um, because it did it opened the door and it helped me not to put kids in a box either because some kids are they are perfect candidates for pecs and some kids they they can get right away um, how to use it and sh that's how she this little girl was she's using it all over the place she's she even told some of the other and the other girls in the group too they're like stop because I start I, I tell them stop 
stop talking, you know, stop touching. Um, yes, it warms my, yeah, it warms my heart knowing that I like, I, you know, that I, I think I'm helping her feel like she can communicate because how, how horrible is that? I mean, I got in trouble all the time for talking in school. If I couldn't talk, I don't know what I'd do. Um, so, yeah, so she, you know, uh, I don't remember what I was saying, but she, basically the, the, even the kids who don't really need the visuals to communicate, they can tell you long sentences, would benefit from this too because it provides visuals. And, and that is, a, you know, an evidence-based practice for kids on the spectrum too that, um, <laughs> Tina, yeah, you got in trouble too. Yeah, I got in trouble constantly for talking. It said it on like all my report cards. So that's like a sign that you probably should be an SLP. Excessive socializing affecting grade. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was really smart, but I was also like, hey, ooh, look, there's birds out there, out the window, or hey. <laughs> what are you doing over there? So yeah, I got in trouble. I mean, seriously, every report card um, got in trouble. So yeah, so I hope that was helpful. Um, I'll, I'm going to whip up a little blog post tonight and yeah, no problem. Um, I'll, I'll try to think of maybe next week I'll keep talking about core boards and how you can use them in therapy and some therapy ideas. So, um, Christine from Live Love Speech, she is she does a lot of preschool and she always is posting on her Facebook fun little activities because she does a lot of hand that's what I noticed with my kids who are moderate moderate bleh, moderately to severely um in those some of those classrooms with a lot of communication challenges. I started trying to do crafts or make pudding or go in the classroom and do cooking or we did a nat I did a nature walk. I did a nature walk with my typical kids and then I had all the aides and the teachers go outside and we did a nature walk. And it worked out well. It was always an experiment. I always was experimenting because I was like, if I have to sit in this room <laughs> and watch spinny lighty toys light up all the time, <laughs> I'm gonna go a little crazy. So I tried to mix it up a little bit. So I'll think of some therapy ideas or some toys that um, I think are good for this population because I think that's one of the biggest challenges. So um, anyways, I will let you go. I feel like I've been talking a lot, but um, I know that, um, yeah, totally, I will. I'll do that next week. Um, we'll talk about that more. So yeah, big takeaways. You can make your own core boards. You just glue these onto um, a file folder. You don't have to do this. Uh, next week I'll bring um, new ones, different ideas. And then you can add fringe. So you could take it off and put different fringe if you're gonna do a farmhouse or if you're gonna do pudding. So you, and then you can, or you can cut these up and use them as PEX icons, which that's what I did too. So some of my kids who were working on PEX, I would have my core board and then I would have four uh, four of their PEC icons or however many PEC icons they needed so they could still pull those off but then um, and you know there's a I, I did ask around and I think kids if they need to see different symbols and for some kids it's going to impact them if you use smarty symbols versus board maker and then I was told that it doesn't matter um, and that's why I would use, that's why I used real pictures with some of my kids because it was like they weren't getting it. Um, and then when I used real pictures of the items, um, they did better because that's just what they needed at the time for their develop, you know, for their development. And some of them, it was really hard to figure out. So yeah, I think it's, it's all, that's, I think the fun, not the fun, well, I don't know if it's fun because um, it's not when you're in the moment. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I asked around too, and it was because someone was asking me, and and some of the big top um, AAC gurus said like, nope, it shouldn't matter. And if it and if they can't decipher between different symbol sets, then that is maybe a clue that you need to try using real pictures. I just remember that at the PEX training too. So, um, anywho, um, hope you have a great week. And um, yeah, if you go on my Facebook page and type in AAC core boards, I think, um, it should pop up with my AAC post. And there is, you can, go, you can download that free core board with the bubbles. So um, you can get the, this is a perfect time of the year to do bubbles um, because it's sunny outside. So you can do it outside possibly as, as long as you don't have runners.
then you might not be able to do bubbles outside. All right, talk to you later. Bye.